Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today I'm going to talk about something called a mag switch. And if you haven't heard of this before, uh, this could change the way you do things in your shop. And what this is, we'll show you a close up in a minute, but what this is, is a little magnetic switch, which is the reason they call it a mag switch. And what the way it works is when you turn it, when it's on uh, like a, a table saw or some kind of a metal surface, it actually locks onto it. The way it works, there's two magnets inside. And when you t twist it, the magnets align and all of the force goes down into a metal table. When you turn it back the other way, the two magnets cancel each other out so you can actually lift that magnet off. And it's being designed so that it will fit perfectly or near perfectly through a quarter inch or sorry a three quarter inch piece of wood. So if you're making jigs or fences or all sorts of things that you might use on your table saw, your drill press, your band saw, any sort of a tool that has a steel base, you can use these little mag switches. So here's a close-up of what the mag switch looks like. It basically is designed so that, as I said, it'll fit through a three-quarter inch board like this. Of course, there's a couple different versions of this, but this is the version that I have. And then you can literally drill a hole, uh, or it's got flat sides on each side. You can actually make a hole and then put it in flat-sided um, so that it'll, it'll grip. And on the top, there's actually a couple of screw holes, so when you put it through, you can actually screw it right to that. If you want, you can actually make a hole with a couple of flat sides there if you want to go to that amount of work. But look at the power that this has. When I turn this on, this is just a piece of steel that I have um, that I use as an anvil around my shop, and I don't, it's, I think it's almost an inch thick and um, I don't know it's a foot by six inches I don't know what it weighs but I could barely lift that and that thing holds that tight now when I was being demonstrated this a few years ago when they first came on the market the gentleman was showing on a table saw and he locked it on and of course I couldn't lift it off but what I did do was take it and push the mag switch along even though it was on and he was aghast because nobody had ever done that before but I wanted to see when you lock that on and you did fix a jig to it that it wasn't going to move on the table saw but it did now here's what you'll see no other place except right here what I did to stop this mag switch from sliding, even though it's turned on, it won't lift up, but it can slide. I have put, using double-sided tape, an anti-skid, a small anti-skid pad on there, and this is, I've done a video on this anti-skid stuff in the shop, and that's what I put on there, and when it locks on, you cannot move that either way. It locks tight because of the anti-skid. And it's just a carpet, a very um, inexpensive carpet tape. And this anti-skid material, uh, it's the very, the thinnest stuff that I could buy because I didn't want it to affect the height when I put it in. And this works just great now with this little bit of anti-skid on here. It locks tight and it won't move. So if you're thinking of using these and you're afraid that it is going to move, that's a small adaption that you can make on your mag switches. So let's take a look at a couple of adaptions that I use my mag switches for. The first one is a, a simple shop made fence that I use on my big bandsaw and I put a couple of mag switches in it and when I put this on my bandsaw uh, it works just great. It locks right down onto the table and it does not move. And let's, let's have a look at the bandsaw with this fence put on that. 
The most use I get out of these mag switches is when I use it on the fence that I've made for my bandsaw. And I just used some good quality scrap plywood that I had laying around and I made this right angle fence for my bandsaw. And you can actually see the anti-skid. There's the mag switches and you can actually see the anti-skid that's being put on the bottom there. And when you put that in place, you can actually move this back and forth. And as you know, a lot of bandsaws actually have drift, and that means that depending on the wood that you're using and the blade, the speed that you're pushing the wood through, they don't always go straight when you're ripping through a bandsaw. They often bandsaws will tend to drift, which means they'll go to one side or the other. And with a with this, with the mag switches, when I turn those on, it's locked solid on there. It is not going to move, but I can actually adjust that fence on the fly if I need to, just by simply releasing both of those switches and accounting for that drift that might happen. So this is the, the best use of these that I have found. I use this all the time, uh, and I probably should have an extra set so that I don't have to keep switching back and forth, but most of the time my mag switches are in this bandsaw fence. The next most popular jig that I have that I use the mag switches on is when I'm at the table saw and I'm cutting some very thin strips and I need to cut quite a few of them for banding or for inlay this little jig works just great and it's got two mag switches on it and of course when you turn those it locks on to the table saw but basically what happens is you measure from here to the table saw blade and then you keep butting up to this and this now becomes your guide for cutting those strips and I'm going to show you how I use this little jig and I do use it a fair bit for cutting very thin strips and repeatable sizes on the table saw. So here we are at the table saw and this is the way the jig works. Now normally I have a little bar like this that's a sixteenth. This is an eighth but for the life of me I can't find it so I'm actually using a, a thin piece of wood. But the way this works is the end of this screw I use it, I put it right up next to the blade and for cutting these thin strips, I actually use a 40 or a 60 tooth 7 and a quarter inch blade. This is a very fine 16th of an inch kerf and it fits in the table saw. So I use this, the head of this, to measure exactly a 16th of an inch away from the blade and then I can, and there's a nut and the bolt, and there's a, a T nut in the end of this, and this all just fastens down very quickly. And it's adjustable so that you can move this back and forth if you need to cut a little bit finer, a little bit thicker. Then you just move it down a little bit further down the blade, lock it in, and that's not going to go anywhere, and now we can cut. We'll zoom back out and we'll actually cut some wood. Okay, so I've moved the jig back down here, which is where I want it. The wood that I'm going to cut, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this wood and just with the fence I'm just going to touch it just to the end, just so it just barely touches that nut. Drop that table saw down just a little bit and we'll actually cut some wood now.
and that's how you cut bandy. It's very thin, very bendable, and very repeatable. So you can keep making more just by moving that fence over just enough to just barely touch the end of that screw that's in there and then make another cut. So that's another very, very, very useful jig using the mag switches. And one of the other uses that I have is in making simple shot made feather boards I actually use the mag switches on on the on the feather board and you can use it of course any place where there's a steel table so I can use this on my bandsaw or on my table saw and I'll admit that I don't use this all that often but there's certain situations where you need a third hand and that's exactly what this does and we'll, let's show you a quick example of how this works on the table saw so this is how the feather board jig works and I'm not going to, going to turn the saw on because you just need to see how it holds that wood against the fence and you'll notice that it doesn't even move because it's so firm on the table that it's because of those anti-slip things that are put on the bottom it really holds fast so that's how that works and I don't use this very often but it's it's available if I need a feather board on my table saw or on one of my band saws. Now I want to talk briefly about how you make the holes because these magnetic switches you can see they've got sort of an oblong hole to them but it's really easy to make the holes for these. You don't have to make a great big hole and fill it. All you need to do is find find the radius of the mag switch that you have and basically you make two cuts just like I've shown here you make with a with a hole saw you just make one cut and then move the center over a little bit and make the second cut and what you end up with then is this oblong hole and the mag switches will just fit right into it and they won't even turn they're they're locked right in there and then all you need to do is use a couple of screws. In a lot of cases you don't even need to use screws because it it sucks itself onto the table uh, so firmly but just so that the mag switch isn't falling out a um, couple of screws on the top of it and in my case for the mag switch that I have uh, I just use this hole saw. It's basically like a big drill bit with interchangeable bits and this is the one that fits perfectly for uh, making the holes. So it's really easy to make the holes for these to put in. So if you're making um, feather boards or any other kind of a jig, that's how you make the holes for it. Very simple to do. And so that's our look at magnetic switches today and how they work and some of the jigs that you can use them on. We, we looked at the fence on the bandsaw. Of course, you can use that fence on a drill press or a table saw. We looked at using a feather board, and you can use that, again, on any tool that has a steel fence. And we actually looked at another little jig that I've uh, made up. Uh, I didn't invent this. I can't remember where I've seen it. Uh, but it works marvelously for making thin cuts on the table saw. And that's especially good if you're doing banding uh, or inlay work with very thin wood. So if you need something to help hold your jigs, or if you just need another pair of hands, a mag switch might be something for you to look at. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.